So I recently solved one of my biggest problems with photography. I go on a trip, take 5,493 photos, and then I post four of them on Instagram. Four. So you're probably wondering what happens to the other 5,489 photos? Well, they sit on a hard drive collecting dust until it's been so long I forget they even existed. What I hate is that I know a good handful of them are actually good photos, but they're never gonna see the light of day. Until now. This is my first ever photo book, and I believe the answer I've been looking for. It's 112 pages long and has hundreds of photos from my recent trip to Japan and South Korea. So today I wanna take you through some of my favorite photos, talk about how they were made, where they were shot, and why I love them so much. So one of the first photos I wanted to look at is actually one of my favorites, and it was taken in Shinjuku in Tokyo. You got the man on the phone in the foreground, you have the other pedestrians behind, and I feel like it's a really dynamic photo that captures the energy and the people of Tokyo really well. This was a classic case of finding a background that you really like, and then waiting for the foreground subjects to appear. So I was probably standing there for about 10 minutes until all these people in this photo lined up perfectly for this shot. And actually the next photo I wanted to talk about is just on this other page. It was taken in Shibuya, also in Tokyo. It's home to that massive pedestrian crossing you've probably seen photos of online. I actually took it from a little pedestrian walkway looking down over a crosswalk. Again, it was all about timing. Each person here is kind of at a different stage of life, a different outfit. I think what makes it really strong is the yellow lines throughout here. If it didn't have those, I think it'd be a little bit boring. So these next two photos are kind of a theme that I found in looking at my photos after, and I was just obsessed with the Japanese uniforms. And I'm getting this cool reflection here in the glass railing. So it's always good to look out for little things like that. On this side, I feel like this photo captures contrast really well. So we have the really busy upper half, paired with this simple lower half, which allows the security guard to really pop out from the frame. We stayed in Tokyo for about a week and I was traveling with my friend Lucas here. Uh, this was our Airbnb. It was actually a really nice spot. This was right outside the train station by our place. And I'm not sure I have to try overlaying it, but I feel like there's something to do with the, the golden ratio, the golden spiral, whatever you want to call it. But I think it tells a really good story with the boxes there and him opening the boxes here. So these are the first photos taken at night in the book. And as soon as I saw these clothes hanging in the window, I knew I could just picture the final photo. So I'm happy it turned out, as well as these ones in the alleys surrounding it. There are a couple more night shots here I wanted to show you. These two are of a Japanese phone booth. I love how they take up the entire page. There's Lucas again, taking a clearly very important call. You'll see him a lot in these photos. He was my go-to subject when there was no one else around. Flipping a couple pages here, this photo has a really cool perspective. I kind of think of it as a mini flat iron building, except Tokyo version and on a budget. I like it because it features the iconic Japanese vending machines that are everywhere. Love how this one came together. So here are two of my favorite photos taken on the subway lines or train lines. This one on the left shows really good depth. You can see all the way down the carriages. On the right here, uh, you can just see how beautiful the trains are. Everyone is so respectful and it wasn't until the second day in that we realized we were the only people talking on the train.
these two photos, I didn't think they were gonna happen in the first place. It was a really kind of muggy, gross day. We were debating whether or not we wanted to go up the Tokyo Sky Tree, which is one of the tallest buildings in the world. We ended up deciding to go up despite the conditions and I'm happy we did. I think these photos are a lot stronger than if it was a bright blue day and really added a totally different vibe to them. These next few pages, you can just see how crazy the nightlife is. The bright lights, the people, the umbrellas. And of course, you can't go to Japan without going to the 7-Eleven. We ate there every single day and just tried different fun foods every time. This photo is sick and obviously I'm a little biased, but this gives me total Blade Runner vibes. It was actually taken in the reflection of a window of Lucas looking out over Shibuya Crossing. You can see all the billboards in the background, his silhouette cut out, the little orange lights going across. Perfect. If anyone is a fan of Studio Ghibli or see my video on My Neighbor Totoro, you will appreciate this photo. You can see the little birds there perfectly, the metro, the blue sky. I mean, come on. These next two photos were taken from a day trip we did to a temple in Southern Japan. The photo on the right was taken with a vintage lens called the Helios 44-2. You can see how much it distorts the image in the bokeh on the background. And funny enough, in this location, this wasn't the original photo I was trying to get. Lucas is standing in the opening of a cave, but as soon as I got in a little closer and just got the trees in the background, I think it ended up being a stronger photo. Now, I definitely wouldn't consider myself someone who's really comfortable with heights, but it was absolutely worth it for this photo on the right here. This was on top of the building our Airbnb was in, in Fukuoka, and there's a ladder there. So Lucas snapped this one of me as I was climbing on up. And on this side was a photo I captured of the building across from us. I love the almost neon sign at the top with the one yellow window. The composition came together really nicely. <laughs> As we traveled through Japan, we went to Kagoshima, which is at the very southern tip of the main islands. There, there is an active volcano that has been erupting continuously since the 1950s. We have the volcano erupting in the top, the forest on the bottom left, and the city on the bottom right, all blending together to make the final shot. These two, I think, pair really nicely together. We have blue hour and sunset. For the blue hour one, we actually used a like $3 filter from a used camera store that will tint the image blue. There's something about getting the color in camera versus doing it in editing that I think makes for such a better end product. These two photos were taken in Kyoto, in the bamboo forest, and it was probably the most touristy place we went to on the entire trip, but I managed to find a couple good angles. This photo on the right is a shutter drag, and that's when you drop your shutter speed and pan along to follow a moving subject in order to get these beautiful streaking lines that show the motion in the shot. It probably took five, 10, 15 tries, but they're always worth it when you get it right. Also in Kyoto, this is an iconic spot. I'm sure a lot of you guys recognize it. It is the Fushimi Inari pathway. This photo on the right was a complete miracle. I got no tourists in it. And this one on the left, I thought it was cool to actually capture people taking photos because sometimes that's more authentic than just trying to get the perfect Instagram photo with no one in it. This one tells a lot more of a story with the actual tourists being in the photo. Next up on our trip, we went to Nara Park, which is famous for its deer. 
they will bow to you if you bow to them. <laughs> I managed to get this photo of a deer in front of this tree. I think the composition's strong, the green and blue go together really well, yeah. To wrap things up, I wanted to talk about a couple photos I took in Seoul, South Korea. One of the places we went to was the Hanok village area, which is super, super touristy. So instead of trying to capture a perfect photo down the street with no one there and photoshopping people out, I managed to get this great one of these two girls taking a photo of each other with the entire city behind. And if you look up in the mountains there, that is called the N Seoul Tower. This on the right is actually the view from right in front of it on top of that mountain. There's also an area with thousands and thousands of locks, which was pretty fun. And uh, I managed to feature them in the foreground blurred out in this photo here of the sunset looking over the city. On one of our last nights in Seoul, it was actually my birthday, so we went bowling. We of course had to see if we could get onto the roof. Um, as soon as we got up there, we were greeted by this giant security camera. We just went for it, it was fine, and we got some really fun photos overlooking Seoul at night. This photo is really nice, Lucas captured of me. It was taken between two satellite dishes in the foreground, and there's me facing my fear heights in the background. And finally, on the very last page of this very long book, I ended it with an iPhone photo because I think it captures just how much fun we had on the trip. What? <laughs> Oh my gosh, look at that. That's that's the entire book. Here is the star of the show. This guy! <laughs> this isn't my apartment. This is Lucas's lovely place. So everybody say thanks, Lucas, in the comments. Luke <laughs> <laughs> Lucas also made a really cool video on his channel about getting a tattoo in Japan. So if you want to check that out, I'll have it linked below. That's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed. If anyone for some reason would like their own copy of this, uh, you can send me an email or maybe message me on Instagram and uh, we can get that sorted out. Yeah, that's it for now. What's goodbye in Japan? Sayonara. Sayonara. <laughs> Sayonara. <laughs>